Hello and welcome to the second video of my build series on my new Tamiya TT01E, the AMG Mercedes touring car. Uh, today we'll be concentrating on parts bag B, which is steps 12 to 23. And we'll get straight in with uh, step 12 is uh, building up the front differential, which is identical to the rear, so as you can see. I've already knocked it all up ready. Moving on to step 13 is basically the same as the rear diff install except for we have two RB1s or 1150 bearings to go into uh, the shaft housing and then we also have parts P3 which goes in between them as a spacer and as you can see it shows lots of greasing and stuff so uh, I think uh, I'll get on and just shove these bearings in and the RB2s which are the 1280 bearings go on the uh, differential and then we've got GB1 which is the bevel pinion gear Okay, so I've uh, just gone to install these bearings and discovered that they slot into quite a deep recess. So I thought I'd show you that. Um, it's a bit difficult getting the things in. And uh, because of that, I have actually greased the inside of this P, whatever it is, P3. And it goes over like so, as a spacer in between. the two bearings and then the other bearing goes on top and they all slide in like so and then we need to grease all of that up and uh, fit the differential in and then move on to step 14 step 14 is installing the gearbox housing and the front lower and upper A arms or wishbones as I call them along with uh, the shock mount and body post mount by the looks of this and for this we're going to need two off of MA1s which are 3x15mm tapping screws and one off of MA2 which are 3x12mm tapping screw mm. uh, we're then going to need B9 and B10 from uh, previous step two off of each A5 remembered this time uh, A10 which is the shock mount and again A9 which is uh, the diff housing and as you can see this time I've uh, greased them all up and uh, greased around the diff housing so that that uh, will hopefully keep some of the dust out and then it's just a case of uh, following the orientation and again sticking them all on and doing it with it upright I think we'll do so we notice here they've got a note here note direction and shape of part so that uh, B10 has the shock mount by the looks of that and that's the bottom one so that'll go in there this one We'll match it in the top eventually. Position the A10 shock mount like so. And we just need to screw the three screws in. The shorter, lighter coloured one goes in the centre and the other two go on the outside. So uh, I'll be back shortly for the next step. Steps 15 and 16 are very similar to uh, previous steps for the rear end which uh, step 15 is adding the front bumper and 16 is making up the front wheel axles so for 15 you're going to need 3 off of ME3's 3 by 10 mil tapping screws 2 off of MA4's which are 3 by 12 mil countersunk tapping screws 
and then for step 16 we're going to need two off of RB1s or 1150 bearings, two off of the C2s and then the plastic parts A3 which are the steering hubs and for step 15 we need another B6 and again I've got some R clips to hold the the wheel axles in and it's just a case of uh, screwing them in and uh, pushing the uh, bearings home so uh, I'll be back shortly we've now got the uh, differential attached and the front bumper mount sorted and the wishbones moving freely so we can get on to step 17 which is uh, attaching the front uprights or the steering uprights or the steering hubs I would call them myself personally but hey there we go uh, again it calls for a lot of grease so we'll grease the inner parts of this and again we're going to need four off of MA3's 3 by 10 mil tapping screws and two off of MA5 3 mil by 10 mil countersunk tapping screws which are going to be for B13 the body mounts um, again when you look at the diagram it uh, shows greasing the uh, dog bones so yet again I've done the slight opposite and greased the cups that they go in and it should just be a case of slotting it in it says it's not going in there we go and then moving this out of the way we can stick a dog bone in so I don't forget and then we can get one of the steering arms check the orientation and it should he says slot in Oops, turn around there we go like that we then have four off of these A1s which are some sort of uh, mm, plastic cup for the screws so we'll just do one and see what happens so it looks like the screw goes in like so and then we should just screw it onto the steering arm gosh darn these magnetic screwdrivers so I'm just going to tighten this a bit up a bit more just to see if it tightens the ball joint up I don't think it is going to and then, but hey and that's it for that I'll do the other side in a minute and uh, again the body mount just simply slots in there and is held in place with one of these countersink screws like so not too tight because it's uh, flexible plastic so I'll get on and uh, do the rest of that and uh, we can move on right so uh, we've now got the front end sorted and I did find that tightening these up when you do both of them does stiffen up the steering a bit so uh, we'll see how we get on there's uh, to me a little bit too much play in the bottom wishbone but we'll see how we go with that so we can now move on to step 18 which is uh, building these pogo six springs and as I said in my unboxing I am going to fit these so uh, we'll quickly go through one I've done the others and you're going to need basically the four springs MB5 and then four off of B3, B12, B11, B15, B7 
and that's about it and it's just a case of uh, sticking them all together so we get the top mount line it up like so the uh, retaining clip shall we say and simply pop it in there and click it push it in then we get B15 over there whoops and the spring and then B7 you just turn it round till it goes in and then turn it a quarter of a turn and that's your pogo sick step 19 is installing the shocks onto the chassis itself and for this you're going to need 8 MB2's 3x14mm step screws or if you've got a short wheelbase body it tells you to use two off of MB3's which are 3x20mm step screws if you do use the short wheel or got the short wheelbase body then you need part B16 as well as a spacer for the shock um, so that's that it tells you to install the shocks on the inside mounting hole if you see from the drawing there's uh, two positions that it looks like you can mount these in and uh, it's telling you to do the inner one um, I've just mounted these two one in each side just so you can have a look and if you mount it on the inside you've got a bit more of a rake and it does actually force shall we say the wishbones down slightly more which gives you more ground clearance I assume once we've finished um, I prefer the outside one at the minute because um, you can't really get any more travel downwards than that at the minute um, so I think what I'm going to do is take this one off and stick it on the outside and again I'll do the same with the fronts step 20 so, is making up the steering arms as you can see I've made one here already and it's uh, a case of requiring two MB2's 3x14mm step screws and plastic parts B1 and A2 sorry not A2 D11 two off and then in this it's got two off of A2 for each side however with the bearing kit has come these 850 bearings um, which will replace these A2's and they simply slot in quite a nice tight fit like that and then checking the orientation we take an arm and one of the step screws and screw it in And there we go, ready to move on to uh, the next step. Step 21 is attaching the urethane bumper. And for that you're going, we're going to need two off of MA3s, which are the 3x10mm tapping screws, plastic part D4, and the urethane bumper. And it's just a case of pushing it home checking the orientation so the uh, two droopy dome bits sticky out bits go over there and then it's just a case of uh, screwing them through those two holes there step 22 and really the last step in uh, this video has step 23 is just putting the battery on charge is attaching the steering arms and for this we're going to need two off of MB1 which is 3 by 
12mm grub screw, two off of MB2 which are 3x14mm step screws and two off of MB4 which are steering posts which are these uh, stainless steel posts that have threaded all the way through and there's a note on step 22 telling you to leave a 5mm protrusion on the uh, MB1 grub screw so it's just a case of popping it in and start to screw it in and then you can always measure it with a ruler. I've got a steel ruler here until you get down to 5mm. Once you've done that you pop this uh, steel steering post on. I'll just screw it all the way in for now and do it properly in a minute. And then taking your steering arms it just basically slots over and the last step will be to install the step screw in there like so. So I'll do all of that and uh, show you when I've done it. Um, as you can see I've already done one ready and it's already looking like better steering than uh, the TTO2 but uh, I'll quickly get that grub screw done and uh, show you the rest. Right so we've got the grub screw all the way in now about five millimeters I don't think it has to be that accurate and like I say you simply screw on the steering post finger tight because uh, there'll be something screwing into the top of these in, in a bit I would imagine and like I say checking the correct orientation <coughs> excuse me pop on the steering arm get your step screw and uh, the instructions show to screw this into the outer hole so that's what we're going to do like that and there we have the steering arms installed and with that as step 23 is the battery putting on charge we'll end this video here I hope you've enjoyed watching this bit and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers bye